Welcome to Elite Commentary with Panzer Dragon. So in this game we'll be playing Mord Kaiser and this will be a ranked game on my main account in Challenger. And in this video I'm just going to be explaining to you what the tactics are to play Mord Kaiser since he doesn't really actually take a lot of skill to play. And if I can play him against LCS 80 carries then obviously it's not that hard since I don't really main the 80 carry role. So in this video I'm going to be explaining to you what the tactics are with Mord Kaiser and how to play him basically in the 80 carry role. And yes, I've been abusing him since the rework and even after the nurse. Anyways, runes and masteries will be in the description as always. And now finally, let's get started. So we want to start these golems together. If your jungler wants to do them, tell him to go away. And make sure not to tank too much of the damage from these golems. I actually underestimated how much hit point I'd actually come to lane. And right here, this lane actually starts out really awful because I underestimated Mordkaiser's W damage a lot. And also I didn't actually think Ash would be doing tons of damage. And what I was thinking in this trade was we could actually kill Morgana, but before I realized that we were actually losing this trade, I actually took too much damage and that flash should have been sooner so that I had more hit point coming back into the lane. Now we have to play super safe and hug the tower and grab whatever CS we can. Because we literally just screwed up our advantage. And the only way I'm going to walk up is for last hits and if I can actually hit one or two champions with my E, since it does give me a shield. Now, right here, they actually leave and give me some breathing room so I can actually farm on a tower. I guess they're scared of Evelyn. But as you can see, I'm just trying to use my W to heal myself. And the enemy actually screws up on this point because now we get the roam and do the scuttle crab. The scuttle crab actually gives me a lot of health since, you know, my W is not reduced on monsters, only minions. So Jungle Mordkaiser is definitely somewhat viable. But yeah, this is the strategy you basically want to do is push up until you're out leveling the enemy so then you can all in them. Or you have a lot of points on your W. Either way, I have to play very safe since our W isn't OP anymore, and all my summoners are down so I'm just playing back and I see this wave is pushing, so it eventually crash into my tower and I can farm safely under my tower. Otherwise if I'm up there, it's actually rather unsafe since the enemy jungler can come, and then I would just miss a huge wave of minions and set myself back. Luckily we get a gank and the blitzcrank gets a really nice pull onto the ash, and now we're just going to snowball our lead and show you how well Mordkaiser does when he's snowballing and, you know, the XP advantage over the enemy. We also have to push this wave into the enemy tower so that it does bounce off, and then the creep wave will be pushing into our tower so we get some free farm. Now let's talk builds. Okay, so as you can see, I started the Ruby Crystal because Dorn Shield and Relic Shield doesn't build into anything, so I'm like, I don't need this item. And then like I said earlier, since I know the wave is going to crash into our tower, I'm just going to do the golems on the side while waiting since we're really good at doing it. And also, I'm building into a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. I feel like going Rylai's Rush is definitely more snowbally than a Trinity Force. Since Trinity Force is only good once you have the actual item, well Rylai's gives you, you know, ability power to have more power. And as you can see, the strategy where we just roam, do the camps on the side, and then go back to lane, and push the lane. But this time we don't push lane because Evelyn is here, so we're going to try and get a gank off. Sadly, she leaves because she doesn't feel like she's going to get a gank, so we say screw this, let's push the lane and go back to our original strategy. Of course, it's very hard for us to pull, you know, any of them since they have Morgana Black Shield, so we can't possibly all in them. If it was anyone else, we could play more of a kill lane though. Otherwise, we're just going to play Farm Kaiser. And right here, I actually can't get those three ranged caster minions because Morgana can land an easy Q. Plus, Blitzcrank actually went away for a second, so I was like kinda zoned and, you know. But now we actually start pushing. And yes, you still max out W because you want the pushing power and sustain. I still do not agree with maxing on E first. And right here, we're doing a dragon. I didn't make this call, but I'm gonna go with my team. Because I do fear Shen out, and that can screw us up very easily. But luckily, Kennen also has teleport. And we're just trying to kill this Kha'Zix, but somehow I get hit by the arrow. And I use my heal prematurely because I know someone's going to ignite me, so I try to get away. I think I could have lived if I actually hit my E, but it doesn't matter. My team is doing fairly well in this team fight. There's also a problem with our team comp where we're all magic damage, so we have to end the game mid-game. Otherwise, everyone on the enemy team will get Banshee's Veil, Bissels, etc. So I feel like if we had like a Gangplank top, it would have been better or something like that. And also, the reason we actually go top lane is because there's a wave going to be crashing in into our top lane tower. So we want to catch that, as Kennen probably won't catch it all when he gets there. So we're just going to lane swap for this sole reason to catch this wave. And also, Kennen did, you know, push our wave in, so we're like, uh... Like, this is probably the worst reason to lane swap, but I think it's very funny to do this right now, because it actually works out in the end. As we do call for a gank from Evelyn to come to the top lane to dive this person and get a clone and get this tower. With this clone, we can actually push two towers in since it's a 4v1 siege on the top lane. So yeah, we can keep pushing, we have a clone, we have more stats than us, and unless they send three people top lane, they can't stop this push. 
And right here, Blitz lands a beautiful pull on Kha'Zix. And honestly, if you were that Kha'Zix, you should not have been just standing there. In range of a Blitz pull, you just don't take that risk or else something like this might happen. Anyways, let's talk about our build again. So Trinity Force may have been better in this game, since we're kind of lacking the physical damage department. Evelyn actually went warrior this game because of that. And right here, I'm building towards the Zonias since they do have a lot of physical damage. And I should get CDR boots because I think CDR might be better for the late game. But of course, Sword Shoes can offer more burst as you do have very high base damage too. And right here, I get caught out because I was super greedy to go for those two ranged minions when like four people were MIA on the map and there was only three of us pushing mid. So that's a risk we should not have done and we were just kind of being a little bit cocky. And yeah, it kind of leads to a little throw. We do actually get outskilled since we're all magic damage. So it's unnecessary for us to be taking these little risks. And again, referring back to the Zonias, I actually feel like it's a better item to get than Randuin's or Deadman's Plate. Simply because you can be avoiding like 600 damage worth of burst. Plus you're also getting ability power which contributes to everything that Mordkaiser does. So when in doubt of buying an armor item, buy a Zonias. And I think Rylize is definitely core on Mordkaiser and you should probably get it first since that 40% slow is super good. But, but it doesn't really matter what you're building when you're winning because, well, this guy snowballs incredibly hard. Anyways, after that failed cannon ultimate, we're just trying to wait for a dragon to pop up and just trying to find some farm around the map. Since the dragon is really core to get on Mordkaiser for sieging enemy base. And right here, our Twisted Fate does get caught out and he does die. So now we can't actually get this dragon. But I think we're going to actually try and do it anyways, which is not recommended because it is a 4v5. But luckily, somehow we catch a Kha'Zix right here and we get his clone and now we can actually fight this 5v4. If this didn't actually happen, this game would have definitely been a much more longer game. And after we get this dragon, we start to push the bottom lane since it is closer and we have a bigger wave. And that's why I actually ping the bottom wave instead of going the mid lane. Right here, we just start sieging. I'm telling my dragon to get that tower. And right here, the enemy actually decides to initiate on us. And I use a premature heal just in case of any sort of ignite. And finally, we start to back out. But Blitz actually gets a really nice pull onto Ash. And now we can actually team fight this really nicely. But I'm being zoned out by Fizz's ultimate. So I have to back out. But finally, Finally we can go ham, Kennen is arriving to the team fight, so this is an easy win for us. And right here I'm taking a tower, so I realize that I'm like okay I gotta get out of here. And now we get to take this tower since everyone is dead on the enemy team. But I'm a bit scared for going for this inhibitor tower since we don't have a big creep wave. The enemy spawn timers are actually coming up really soon. And I also suicide. Hmm. Anyways let's talk about what kind of supports you want as Mordkaiser. So you don't want a bitch support like Soraka. You won't like ham supports, people who are big, melee, and tanky, as this is the best way to use your W. Otherwise, if you're like with Soraka or someone, you will basically lose the lane and be zoned very hard. Anyways, that was a good push, so now we're just going to look for farm and try and push our lanes and see what we can do after mid lane. Finally, we have Zonia's, and I'm just waiting for my team to group up. Our siege is kind of ass because we don't have an AD carry. All we have is Twisted Fate and Blitzcrank. We do have really good counter engage with Kennen, so... If they do engage on us, we do have Cannon's ultimate. But honestly, there's not much other things to do since we have the other inner turrets already. Like, Baron isn't even up, so we can't do the Baron dance. And right here, he's in initiation, but we have a lot of people just, you know, defending Evelyn. And right here, Blitz goes for the God Hand onto Kha'Zix. I immediately use my ultimate on him. Since I do want his clone, it doesn't matter what clone you get as long as you get one. And right here, I'm just confused where my clone is at and what I'm doing in this team fight. And the whole time, I actually didn't realize I was taking the tower. And now I have to pop Zonia's because I'm being creep blocked. So as you can see throughout this game, Mordkaiser is definitely really snowbally if you make great use of his clone and if you get the dragon pet as sieging becomes very very easy. But now we have to back out because the spawn timers are coming up and we also have some big waves on the side building up. I go to the jungle to get some farm since I'm very close to hitting level 13, which is my hugest power spike since my Q will be at its highest level and that's definitely the big threat in team fights. Now I feel like the items I have right here is very core on him, like I already have everything I need and so I'm like, hmm, well I already have a lot of AP, might as well go with Death Cap. And I don't know, his build is literally like everything, you can build whatever and you'll still be good. But this Fizz goes on to Arcanon, which is really bad because Arcanon does have Zonias, so there's no reason for this Fizz to be going on Arcanon. And he basically suicides. Now that we have two kills on the map, we can definitely push into a mid inhibitor. Mid inhibitor is so much better than a Baron because once we do have that mid inhibitor, we have a lot of control on the map, so we can use that to get Baron control. Though I do feel like in lower yellows, Baron is much better because you just get like raw stats, global gold, and in lower yellows, it's a bloodbath. So that's just my opinion, since I think my team wants to buy and heal or something. And I'm just sending my clone to try and help my team if they're like gonna get caught out, and luckily, well, that happens. 
So good play by me, I pat myself on the back for that one. And now all we have to do is get the dragon and siege a tower, or we can go get the dragon, get Baron, and then win the game off that. As you guys know, dragon is really good for taking out the Baron since it does do percent current health damage, and there's no cap on it, so our win objective is very clear to us. But right here, the phase goes on Kennen, and now we're forced to team fight and help him out. But luckily, Kennen has Zonia's, and you know, Fizz doesn't know this yet, so basically, he's gonna die right here. So now we're just gonna chase down the enemy and see what we can pick off before we go transition to Baron. But we actually get a lot of people. In fact, I feel like we can actually end this as five people since we do have a dragon, so that's like six versus three. And I feel like if we just all push mid, we can actually end the game right here. But they're busy getting Baron, so I'm like, hmm, let's see how much potential I have with this dragon and me. So right here, I'm going to be engaged on and preemptively use my heal, since I do not want to have the reduced heal if he has Ignite. And yeah, basically, just whacking away at him. And I actually didn't know my ultimate was up, I thought my dragon was still up. And then I pop my Zonia so I get my cooldowns back, and eventually, I just put everything onto Morgana. And then finally, I'm trying to reach this Ash so I can basically hit her with my E, and somehow we end up 1v3ing, and that's basically Mordkaiser for you. Oh, and Shen comes along, but I'm pretty healthy because of my W. And then now I'm like, ooh, we can definitely win this since I do have a clone. And I actually realize we have Baron buff. I didn't actually think my team could actually do it, since I don't feel like our team has a lot of damage without me. But apparently they do. And this is what I get for typing. I didn't realize Kha'Zix was here, and I get jumped on by him. If I had my Morgana maybe closer to me, or if I used my E, I maybe could have survived, but yeah. Didn't think that was a possibility. But yeah, this game is basically over, and let's just go the rundown of what we did this game. So first off, remember, the strategy, push the lane, go farm your jungle, get the scuttle crab, go back to the lane and push it again. Your goal is to try and out-level enemies so you can eventually all in them and kill them and then get the ghost. And then what do you do with the dragon pet or a ghost? You start sieging down towers and snowballing the game. Rylize versus Triforce, mm, if you need physical damage, go Triforce. If you want to snowball harder and be very sticky, go Rylize Crystal Scepter. If you need an armor item, go Zonia's. This wasn't mentioned in the video, but if you need a magic resist item, go Spear Fissage or Abyssal. Preferably Abyssal. And I'm going to be doing only these commentaries in Challenger. I will also be doing live gameplay commentaries too, but that's when I'm like, you know, trying out a new champion or just doing something unorthodox and not really like a meta champion like Zyra Jungle. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like this video, make sure to hit that like button as it does help a lot. Comment below on what you thought about this commentary, like any feedback. Let me know what kind of meta jungler you want to see next for these type of commentaries. I think a lot of people wanted Tom Kench, but I'm not sure. And yeah, I'm Pantsar Dragon, and I'll see you guys next time.